It's Christmas time in Kenya and festive cheer is in the air. The country is over 85% Christian, but not everyone is keen to celebrate the holiday. My name is Helen Kature. I am 25 years old and I am the new vice president of the Atheist in Kenya Society. So the event for tonight is the end of year party. We like to call it the godless party. It is like our Christmas. <laughs> We do not need Christmas to celebrate. Here in Kenya, there's a lot of stigma from being non-religious. It doesn't matter if you're agnostic, atheist, spiritualist. Honestly, this time of the year is always the hardest, especially if your family, let's say, disowned you out of your beliefs. So I would just tell people or non-believers to find a community like the ones I find here. That community is the one that Helen is trying to build though her road to secularism has not been an easy one. Like most of African households, I was raised in a religious family. I went to catechism, I was baptized, I could even take sacraments. At some point I became an atheist and now I can say I am deeply spiritual. Not religious, but deeply spiritual. Helen credits her love of reading for opening her eyes. These religions do not come from the African perspective. It was brought here by the colonial masters. When you're a young child now, you're taught to go to church from such a young age that that, that is all you know as you grow up. It's like some kind of indoctrination. It is ingrained in our political system, in our school systems, and I feel like belief should be a personal choice. Her group focuses on education with book clubs, podcasts, and an active social media presence. But not everyone agrees with their free thinking aims. Of course, it is stigmatized. Anything that has to do with atheism is regarded in Africa or in Kenya as devil worshipping. Like, for example, when it first came out that I am the, vice, the new vice president of the Atheist in Kenya Society, my mom got a lot of calls of people telling her that she should organize prayers and I should be delivered from this devil. It was ridiculous to hear all these things that are not true. There is nothing about devil worshipping when you decide to think outside of the box. The starkest challenge came in the form of a lawsuit when a powerful politician and former bishop asked a court to deregister the society on grounds that it violated the preamble of Kenyan's constitution. We found it to be ridiculous and surprising that such a powerful person, such a um, respected person of the state would target an organization that is basically trying to just bring together youth who have um, similar ideas. We were expecting a bit of backlash but we were not expecting for it to go to the, uh, to the point of litigation because as much as uh, people hold strongly to their beliefs, we do believe there's also the freedom of worship. That freedom is one that Kenyan's constitution guarantees, but the group's founder, Harrison Mumia, knows there are real risks to speaking out. He was fired from his job at Kenya's central bank for tweets his employer deemed political. So Helen, you know, we are in court and we are sort of defending ourselves in court and it's going to be a challenge. But you know, I, I lost my job. You are now coming out. You've decided to be like open a vice president of the society. You're in the media. Are you afraid? I'm very scared actually. But I believe this is a worthy cause and there are a lot of people who are just waiting for us to take the first step. So I'm willing to continue because interfaith dialogue is very important. We need to um, make the religious community realize that we are not different, we are not fighting them. In, in fact, we are on the same side. But what do the religious community think of Helen and her group? 27-year-old Felista is a congregant at a church in Helen's neighborhood. For her, the case is clear cut. In Kenya, we believe in Christ and we have a strong faith. Those who are looking to be known as atheists or to be allowed to start uh, practicing it, it's not supported. It is illegal. So I think the judges and everyone who is involved in that will just say it's illegal, like it's not allowed. Pastor Marcos takes a different view. While he opposes atheism, he doesn't think it's the role of government to suppress the group. It is for you to choose whether to follow the atheist or to follow Christ. So I don't think uh, uh, them going to court, there is any change. There is a higher court, and that is the Christ court is the one to change. For Helen, a lot of this opposition stems from a lack of contact. She hopes to break down barriers by reaching across the religious divide. So today we've decided to visit a church close to my neighborhood. Um, I 
I feel excited, I feel very nostalgic because everything that's going on here is something that I used to practice when I was younger. We do know that the, the religious community believe that we are very different, but we'd like to show them today that we are not and they, we have nothing to fear by coming to church, by going to religious places. And we feel like if they're able to see us more, then they'll be able to accept us and, that, and see that we have the same um, interests, we're fighting the same battle of freedom of religion. It may not be the same religion, it may not be the same faith as theirs, but it is still the same. As far as Christmas goes, Helen may no longer be a believer, but she's still looking forward to spending the holiday with her loved ones. For me personally, I, I, I am excited for Christmas because I will spend this time with my family. So I don't necessarily run away from it. Instead, I sit, I listen, and I take what I feel um, resonates with me. We're not trying to change anyone's beliefs. All we are trying to do is to promote a platform where all these people who believe in different things can come and all those people who feel that they, that they are still closeted and afraid of um, sharing the beliefs, we want to create such a community and tell them that it is okay.